So tonight we're finishing up talking about finding God's will. And not next week, but three weeks from now we will start uh, What's My Purpose in Life. And um, so next week we'll look at the Sil- Alyssa Childers uh, part two that we started a couple weeks ago. And then uh, we're going to be playing Mortal Combat. And then the week after that, um, I will talk to Chuck and see what's up with that. So, Okay, so uh, the first step, does anybody remember what the first step was? What does the... Bible say? Bible say. Bible say. The, number t- the second step was... Develop... Uh, relationship? Heart. Oh, God. After God. The third step was. Check it with your ears. Ish. Seek wise counsel. You are on the right. You are on the right path. I should have. I should have taken a picture of the list. Hey, should I go home and grab the ghost pepper pickles? So then, part four. You know we're recording, right? Oh. Yeah. Same as every week. Every week. Uh, so then the fourth step uh, is look for God's providence. Now, this is one that you really have to watch out for. Providence is basically uh, God's, um, I don't know how to say it, uh, God's intervening uh, and guiding, I guess you could say. Um, a, two good examples of this are found in the books of Esther and Ruth, where it doesn't really even mention God, and yet everything just happens to fit together so perfectly. Um but you really have to watch out for finding God's providence because you can oftentimes find it where it's not there. <laughs> like God, that's not saying that God wants that. Um, so, you know, not every time that it looks like something's working out is it God. A good example of this is uh, in the book of First Samuel, David has an opportunity to kill King Saul and claim his kingship. And it was not so much God as just an opportunity. Um and uh, so he actually did not do that because it would have been an, a bad thing for David to have done that. Um, so uh, also uh, going up with this, a good a good um, plan to make when you are you know uh, trying to trying to figure out what to do in any given situation. <laughs> when you are trying to figure out what to do with any given situation. I don't want people drinking after you. I'm sorry. <laughs> especially when they're eating something. Yeah, especially when they're eating stuff. Oh my gosh, sorry. Okay, back on back on track. Talking talking about sideburns. Um, anyways, a, a good standard to follow is to make plans. Ma- make plans with your life. Don't just like, you know, oh, well, it's just another day. You know, like, you know, make plans. If you want to go to college, go to college. If you want to go to a different trade school, that's fine. Do that, whatever. Make plans, but don't worship the plans. And what I mean by that is if they fall apart, it's not the end of the world. If you go to college and it doesn't work out, hey, it's okay. It's not like your worth is somehow discredited by the fact that you weren't able to do that. That's fine. Um, so make the plans, but don't worship the plans. Um, but following up with that, don't make plans based off of fear. A good example of this is I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I, I, I'm afraid that I won't have any secu- job security. I'm afraid of this. So I'm going to join the service. Now, if there's nothing wrong with joining the service, but I mean, don't join the service out of fear. Join it because that's what you want to do. You know what I mean? There's a total difference there. Um, or here's another good example that I actually hear quite often. I'm afraid to be alone, so I will get with this person who is not right for me. I see people do this all the time. They're just so scared to be alone that they keep getting with people that are just not good people to be with. It's not it's not what you'd call marriage material. Um so in the midst of all this, remember that what God's providence really means that at the heart of it is that God is a God who really does care. He's a God that is working in the situation, and he is in control. That's obviously, once again, not saying that everything, you know, um, that you should take every opportunity or that everything that happens was God's, you know, orchestrated will or whatever. But still, um, remember that there is some peace in that. Now, the prosperity gospel was something that was pretty pretty popular um, that was pretty popular uh, especially a couple of years ago it's kind of been thwarted for the time being for just you know the weirdo new apostolic kind of stuff but um, basically the prosperity gospel says that bad things only happen to sinful people so long as you know you're a good person everything will just work out and that just is not true there's another school of philosophy that, that, that says basically that everything that has happened was just meant to be and it's like 
that's just nonsense. That would basically mean that choices don't really mean much of anything. It was just kind of destined to happen. Um, Bruce, uh, Bruce Waltke uh, wrote this. He said, we, we are a society who values wealth over character and actions over um, – well, I, I, I said that, but he said that first part. We, we, we are a society who values wealth over character, and that's very true when you're talking about um, finding God's will because a lot of it is more developing a good character, but we make it into a thing about you know uh, a to-do list or, or you know um, getting, getting rich quick or that kind of stuff. Um, remember that, that um, attitudes are more important than actions. W how you do something is more important than what you do. And whenever you're trying to find out what's your purpose in life and finding God's will, the main thing is God wants to see your character grow. You know what I mean? Like you could become a, you know, you could go into the service. You could become a, a comic book writer. You, you could become a, a construction worker, whatever. But in all those things, what God's really concerned about is, is your character and that you're willing to do something if he tells you to do it. Um, and like I said a couple weeks ago, there's going to be some people that God specifically tells them to do a specific thing, like, hey, go and pastor this church, and then there's going to be other people that he does not do that to. Um, so this will go. There we go. Um, don't don't get into a place where you start trusting um, your your blessings from God rather than God. Like for instance, God gives you finances, and so so you start putting all your trust in your money. Um, God doesn't promise us fair, and He doesn't cause promises an explanation. That's increasingly important to remember when you're finding God's will, because you oh well that's not fair and that's not fair, and you know God why is why is this happening? Why God never promises that He's going to answer those questions. A good example of that would be Job. Um, you know, you have this long, long talk, just a lot of talking in that book, and yet at the end of it, the issue really isn't resolved too much and that it wasn't really answered. Um, so don't forget to keep the Bible as number one as you're going through this. Sometimes we have like, oh, well, this is a good opportunity. It's like, well, maybe, but doesn't the Bible say not to do that? Ah, but it's a good opportunity. It's like, well. You do not have a good reason to contradict the Bible as much as you think that you do. Um, and whatever situation you're going through or experience you have from the past, that doesn't determine what is true. And so it's important that as you go from these different hard situations in life and complicated issues and things that you don't really know how to respond to, that you always go back to, to step one. What does the Bible say? Oh, well, I'm smart enough. I can just figure it out. And it just seems like this is the right thing. And, you know, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Remember that whenever we're talking about God's providence, God's working, God doesn't call us to sin, and just because we feel good about something doesn't mean it is good. There's going to be sometimes that, oh, this is a great opportunity. It's like, well, is it though? You, you would have to, you know, do this thing, and that's not really a good thing to do. Um, sometimes where God calls you is hard and full of problems, and that's just a fact of it. So when you're talking about God's providence, sometimes you'll look at the situation around you and say, but it's so hard. Obviously, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, and just because something hard is hard doesn't mean that, that that's not where God wants you. So then the fifth step, is this something that makes sense? So you've read the Bible, you've developed a heart for God, you, you, you've sought counsel, you have um, brain fart, uh, you looked for God's providence. Now you're taking all this and you're looking at it and you say, does this really even make sense? Um, and the basic idea of this step is God gave you a brain, use it. Don't use this as step one. It's still step five. But at this point in the progress, use your brain. Or pro I'm sorry, process, use, use your brain. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that sometimes we just make life too stressful and like, oh, I'll miss that one perfect preordained path. And it's like, that's not how it works. God won't always guide you through the spectacular. That's just something you have to come to come to terms with. And sometimes he'll let you choose. Sometimes there'll be a couple opportunities of what you'd be good at for a job, and that's okay. Um, or for, for a spouse, for that matter. Um, God's ways are, are not our ways, and logic can... Uh, I'm sorry, large, logic cannot always steer as true. Sometimes we confuse ourselves by thinking about it too hard. Sometimes we think that we're so smart that... It's just better if you don't keep the if you keep this at step five instead of step one. So some good questions to ask yourself as you're trying to answer the hard questions that you're trying to figure out. You know, of 
what should I do, where should I go, who should I marry, who should I, all this different stuff. Number one, so um, what does the Bible say about this? Is it, so like a good example of that, and we'll look at this later, is um, is this the kind of person that the Bible says that we should, you know, get with? Um, what are your gifts and talents? Obviously, if you're good at like drawing, for instance, you probably shouldn't get in a in a in a profession like becoming a professional chef. I mean, that's just kind of a waste of talent. I mean, you could do that. It's whatever. Um, maybe you have multi a bunch of talents. Maybe you have a talent for cooking. Well, then you should be a chef. Um, what can you do is oftentimes a good st a starting place. Sometimes we think about the end product, where I want to be at at the end. When a better process is to just ask yourself now, well, what can you do? Let's start with that. Like, for instance, um, Isaiah might have a little bit of a hard time doing lawn service. So maybe, you know, if a job came up for that, he would be better off moving past it. You see what I'm saying? Ask yourself, what can I do? Is this something that I would be able to do that I'd have, you know, be able to do, you know, uh, 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 well, that kind of stuff. There's a lot of jobs that I've been offered to have, and I, and I have to sit, sit and think, I would not do this job well. So no, I will not do it because I, I'm not qualified for that job. You know, I'm not, you're not going to be good at everything that you do. You just have to kind of accept that in life. Um, what are your circumstances? Do you have a strategy, an end game, a purpose? Um, Kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so here's a good example of of, all, of some of these things. Okay, Balaam is is a prophet or uh, a pagan prophet, I guess you could say, in the Book of Numbers. Um, it, it's a long story. We'll just move past that. Balaam is a guy in the Book of Numbers, uh, and he was asked by a guy named King Balak to curse Israel. Now, here's the thing: God had already said that those who cursed Israel would be cursed. So if Balaam would have started with step one, read the Bible. He clearly would have had his answer, but instead he tries to go and find this divine revelation. See what I mean? God, give me a special revelation because I don't want to read your Bible. Well, if he would have just read the Bible right there, and by the way, he did have knowledge of the law. He mentions this. There's some things that he says later on that show that he absolutely did have knowledge of it. And he just chose not to listen to it. Um, next up, God had given signs and wonders to verify what he said about Israel. Balaam didn't pay attention to that. Um, next up, God specifically told Balaam not to go. He didn't listen to that, and he asked again. God confirmed in Balaam's heart that it was good to bless Israel. It says that he was blessing Israel, and then the very last time it says he saw that it was good to bless Israel. So he stopped using divination to discern God's will. And it's like, well, um, pretty sure God said not to do that too, so... You see what I mean? He could have saved himself a lot of the heartache just by step one. In this example of what should Balaam have done, we haven't even gotten past step one. So a lot of times that'll be a good uh, a good uh, way to steer yourself. But then, uh, let me see here. But then Balaam went and uh, encouraged them to persuade Israel through sex uh, to and idol worship and that kind of stuff, and it worked. Um, and you know, you could obviously justify this kind of thing. Well, it's not really cursing them. I just told somebody else. See what I mean? It's like, well, you were kind of behind it though, Balaam. Um, so uh, obviously, the lack of character there. If he would have, by this point, all of Balaam's. Uh, Balaam's entire story could have been resolved by just developing the first three of the five steps. Um, so Balaam was using divination to discern God's will. Balaam didn't listen to wise counsel. He just listened to his own heart and to the greedy king. Um, there was uh, God. There was no providence of God in the, th in the thing. It didn't make sense. If Balaam would have just stopped for a second and just sat down and said, does this really make sense? He would have seen, no, it, it really doesn't make sense. Like, I'm out here to do what? Like this, this doesn't, this isn't something that God obviously wants. And that brings us to the sixth and final stage: divine intervention. Now, this is something you should not. Don't take this the wrong way, but you shouldn't bank on it. Okay. Sometimes, basically, the idea is this: that sometimes God and God will intervene in a situation, but don't bank on Him intervening. You know what I mean? Like a good example of that would be. Um, when Peter, do I have this written down? Oh, I do, so I'll just wait. Um, 
what what people do oftentimes is is they became and become immobilized waiting for a miracle. You know what I mean? Like, oh well, I, I I'm waiting for God to do this. And it's like, well, did God say that He was going to do that? Well, no, but I I'm just waiting and trusting in faith. It's like, but that's not that's not really faith because the Bible already told you what you should do. Your counsel has already told you what to do. You know, all these different things. You've circumnavigated all that, and now you're here waiting for divine intervention when you didn't listen to steps one through five. Like like praying for a job and not actually going to fighting for a job? Yes, or saying, okay, um, I've got a medical concern that I should probably go to the doctor for. But instead, I'm going to wait and sit on my hands and just, you know, I'm not going to do anything about it and just hope that God intervenes. It's like, well, you could try different things. Yeah. You could try, you know, remedies. You could try health. You could try exercise. You could try a doctor. You could try heck anything. Um, don't be immobilized waiting for a miracle, but God may step in. Um, waiting to do is not faith. It's just demanding that God speak how you want him to. God, this I've decided that this is how you have to work. I'm pretty sure that if Chuck could have had his way, he probably wouldn't have gone through dialysis at all. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm probably not wrong. Uh, <laughs> but if he would have sit, sat in, at his house just waiting for God to have him, he, he would have died later on that same day. We just heard him talk about this last Sunday night. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, you, you know, it's probably not the greatest of ideas. And you see a lot of stubborn Christians do this too. I, I don't want to go to the doctor for this. It's like, well, you, you probably should. Well, well, I'm trusting that God will heal you. And maybe he will. Maybe he will. You never know. But until then, let's take care of this. Um, and obviously, keep praying, keep believing that God does heal and that kind of stuff. Absolutely. I'm not trying to discourage that. Uh, not at all. Um, sometimes God will change our perspective on the situation or on sc what Scripture says about it, not the truth of what he said. Okay, God doesn't change what he said, but sometimes he'll change our perspective on the situation. Um, so a good example of this is actually the example I was about to say earlier. Um, Peter is on his roof praying, and God shows him this vision of a cloth coming down with all these unclean animals, and it changes Peter's opinion. You know, he goes to this to this uh, non-Jew's house, and uh, he's able to kind of see it in a whole nother light because of, of, of that encounter. Um, so God may change our desires and our perspectives on what seems best as well. Uh, this is a good uh, the step five the the is does this make sense God can sometimes change our logic on a situation too um, so do you want to find God's will it, it, it's this simple draw close to him and live how he told you to live start there and that's just a good a good step one of finding God's will are you motivated by what's best for you or by obeying God sometimes we say I want I, I want to find God's will when what we really mean to say is, I want to do what I want to do, and I want God to bless me in it. And it's like, well, you know, maybe you already know the answer. Like, oh, what's God's will? Should I should I do this or should I do that? And it's like, sometimes you're at, people ask that question because they don't want to take any chances in life. Well, I don't want to make a mistake. It's like, well, get used to it. <laughs> you're going to make a lot of mistakes in life. You need to just uh, realize that before you get too far. Um, so this says that next week is what's my purpose in life. That's not true. Uh, sorry about that. Um, like I said, next week we'll talk. We'll, we'll watch that that video and, and play Mortal Kombat. The week after that, I will we'll figure something out. I don't know. We'll figure something out. And then um, the next week we'll talk about this. No, it's still going. So are there going to be in my house? Right. Next week is going to be at Chuck's house. Um, <coughs> don't use the front door. Go run to the back. <laughs> Um, any questions on, on these on this six stage process? I'm going to bring it back up when we look at what's my purpose in life in three weeks. So, any questions? No. Is it? Excuse me. Is it done? Mm, it should be. I just want to make sure all the audience. Forget, forget. Why is it taking so long?